Halo Infinite may have been a flaming disaster, but that doesn't mean we should forget how amazing the early Halo games were, and still are. So I'm going to show you how I unlocked every achievement in Combat Evolved Anniversary using some cool tricks and skips along the way. There's only one place to start and that's with a co-op run on the hardest difficulty, Legendary. No warm up for Joe and I required because we've completed this game so many times at this point. The achievements can be split into three categories really, there's the campaign completion, collectibles which are the skulls and terminals, and lastly some mission specific miscellaneous achievements. My plan was to go through the campaign on Legendary Co-op, picking up some of the miscellaneous achievements along the way, basically whichever I could be bothered to go for at the time, and then go through solo, mopping up the collectibles and whatever else remained. Pillar of Autumn is first up, and the two extra achievements for this one are completing it without picking up a health kit, and completing it without picking up an overshield. Pretty straightforward, especially as you're able to die and still get the achievement. There's a couple of places where the health kits are on walls right next to doorways, so I just made sure I didn't get too close to them. Other than that, the level is easy to blitz through, and by completing it, we unlocked the previously mentioned achievements, plus some others for finishing a level on co-op on normal, heroic, and legendary. Next was probably the most memorable level in the game, Halo. Again, this has two mission-specific achievements, destroying three of the four Banshees, and the much more annoying, completing it without using a Warthog. After taking out the first couple of Banshees and helping the survivors fight off a few dropships worth of enemies, we decided to ignore the Warthog and go for that achievement. It's simple enough, just takes a while to trek through the level. There is one minor hurdle to navigate though, and that's this gap which is normally jumped over in the Warthog. Unfortunately I forgot all about it so didn't save any grenades and we had to revert to last checkpoint and after betraying a marine to grab some grenades, which also turned them against us for the rest of the level, we ran back to the gap and hopped over with a grenade jump. Oh, and I also grabbed an achievement for finding my first terminal and this was just below the gap. The rest of the level had us searching for more survivors but you can actually speed the whole process up a lot if you just take them all out. We didn't really have a choice about this either because they were aggressive towards us after killing them earlier for some grenades. And the other two banshees appeared once we made it to this canyon so we shot them down but we didn't end up getting the achievement. Uh, the achievement is to destroy three of the four but I think we just took down two each so that was a bit of a fail. I decided to come back and do it later on though. The rest of the level was easy, just clearing two more areas of marines and covenant before being extracted in a pelican. Following that though was one of the longest missions in the game, Truth and Reconciliation. Again, two miscellaneous achievements but one I chose to ignore until later. The other is finishing the level with four or more rounds left in the sniper. There are a couple of tricky parts such as the fight against all the sword elites when we first made it into the ship and also a load of enemies to clear out in this hangar but mostly it's just a long but not too challenging slog and once we rescued keys we made it back to the hangar, we escaped in the cruiser and unlocked two more achievements. The silent cartographer has one of the most iconic skips in the whole of Combat Evolved, flinging yourself out the warthog and through the security doors before they close. However, I decided it would probably take me longer to do the skip than it would for Joe and I just to blitz through the level normally. I did do the warthog trick on the Master Chief collection to get the speedrun achievement but that was a good few years ago now. The first achievement available in this mission is for storming the beach without losing any marines. That was very easy for the two of us to get done first try. The only thing to look out for really is accidental betrayals. Luckily though, the only person Joe betrayed was me so we got the achievement done. The second achievement for this level is for escaping the map room without firing a single shot. But there's a few things you can do to make that easier so I saved it for a later run and we finished up the mission normally. Next was Assault on the Control Room and this is probably my favourite level in the game for one reason only. Back when we played this as literal children we managed to stumble across a glitch that despawns all of the enemies for the rest of the level. Don't get me wrong, I'm not implying we were the first people ever to discover it, but it was cool to figure out this kind of thing before guides and such had really taken off. The way we do it is far less elegant than the more refined methods these days but it's still fun. Basically we jump off the bridge here to reach the ledge below and then with one of us dead, the other drops down another level and whilst they ultimately fall to their death, they have enough time sliding across the next ledge to spawn the other person. And from there we were able to drop down into the valley and there won't be a single enemy from this point until the end of the level. Right towards the end there is a banshee which is normally swiftly boarded by an elite. If you take him out before he gets in and grab the banshee you get an achievement. Or you can just despawn every enemy like this and it becomes a lot easier. And with Assault on the Control Room quickly out of the way, we moved on to 343 Guilty Spark and Halo's spooky introduction to the Flood. This mission is very quick, it just had us fighting our way down into the structure and back out again. 
and even though we got lost a few times we still managed to unlock the achievement for escaping it in under 21 minutes. The library has another speed related achievement, this time for completing the level in Legendary in under 30 minutes. I was expecting to have to go back through another time to get this but we found a way to fight our way through the lovely repetitive floors quick enough and pop the achievement. A very nice surprise that one. There's not too much else to say about this level, in my head I always think of it as being the most painful one in the game but actually it's not that bad, just very samey in design. I will be returning to it later on though because there is a second achievement to do but that can wait for now. Into the final three now and two betrayals was the first of those. Maybe the hardest level in the game? There's another cool trick that's not too bad to pull off at the start of this mission. So when I came to opening the door leading out to the snowy area outside, I pressed it once like normal, but then as soon as the graphics on the button stopped, I pressed it again. Do not ask me why, but for some reason this despawns the majority of the enemies outside. It just leaves a few right on the outside of the door, but the rest is clear and we had a nice run down to the banshee at the bottom. In order to actually progress with the level though you need to first go press the button again and that triggers the loading zone but obviously you've skipped a lot of the pain by having the banshee already so now I can just fly straight up to the first tower. And overall this level is super tough with pretty much every enemy type in the game thrown at us including rocket launcher wielding flood in lovely small areas but we did get it done after about one hour of trying. At this point we had been playing Halo for nearly the whole day so I stopped there and I continued the next day solo. This worked out well though because the next mission keys has a skip that I just refuse to not use despite it taking me quite a while to get it down. I won't bother showing all the failed attempts I'll just show you how I managed to do it. So when the level starts I ran forwards and grabbed this friendly flood that's chasing a grunt. I then led him back to the start point and lined myself up roughly with this mark on the wall. After that I knocked him down with a charged plasma pistol shot and positioned myself crouched over his head and when he revived it pushed me through the wall to the other side. And from there I just walked briefly into this room to hit a loading zone and then to these lovely inanimate enemies. I chucked a few grenades down to take them out because otherwise they would have killed me in the cutscene. And then after that cutscene I chucked a grenade to distract the enemies and ran past a few more before dropping down into the hangar. And once the banshees pulled up and the elite jumped out I hopped in and sailed off leaving me with just one level left to complete. The moor is Halo's final mission and the first half is just fighting back through the Pillar of Autumn and setting it to self-destruct. The second half is the iconic Warthog ride to the escape vehicle and I'll skip straight to the Warthog part because that's where the achievements come in. Firstly for completing the drive without being ejected and secondly reaching the end with one minute or more remaining on the countdown on Legendary. This isn't too hard to do, the route I take for the four rooms is middle, left, left, middle and there are also a couple of shortcuts to make use of in the tunnels. And doing it that way I managed to reach the end with just over 15 seconds to spare and unlocked both achievements. Although I do have a confession, I did actually flip the Warthog but I quickly pressed start and reverted to checkpoint. I wasn't sure if the achievement would still pop but luckily it did. And with that done I also picked up achievements for completing the game on normal, heroic and legendary difficulties. At this point I had 27 of the 44 achievements unlocked so it was time to get mopping up starting with another run through the campaign, this time on easy difficulty, finding all of the skulls, terminals and completing any miscellaneous achievements which didn't require a specific difficulty. I won't bother showing you every collectible but somehow Joe and I managed to not stumble across any skulls during the entire legendary run so during the Pillar of Autumn I got the achievement for finding my first one. Then on Halo I took down three banshees before returning to truth and reconciliation. The achievement I was missing from this level was completing the sniper ambush at the beginning without being detected. I recommend doing this in the old graphics because it's much easier to actually see what's going on. But yeah, I just took my time and made sure to not miss any grunts tucked away and got the achievement done. Alongside these I was still hunting the skulls and terminals and the next two levels both had skulls which required a bit of a tricky grenade jump. First was the silent cartographer and then assault on the control room. And whilst clearing that level, I unlocked achievements for finding half of the skulls, destroying all four wraiths with a tank, and also finding half of the terminals. After those, I sailed through the remaining few missions. Even an unfortunate checkpoint on 343 couldn't stop me, although I did briefly fear that I was going to have to restart the level here for a minute. I was also a bit silly to not grab the terminal on keys when I did the skip on Legendary, but fortunately it only took me a couple of attempts to pull it off again. And once I'd made it back to the moor, I grabbed the last collectible related achievements. Firstly finding all of the terminals and then all of the skulls. And with those out of the way, I just had 8 achievements left. Mostly mission specific things, 
On the silent cartographer, I needed to escape the map room without firing a shot on heroic or higher. Luckily, you're able to use grenades for this, and even more luckily, you can use the infinite ammo skull. So I just took my time and spam grenades to fight my way back out and to the evac pelican. I also stuck on the piñata and I would have been your daddy skulls. So when I finished up, I unlocked the previously mentioned achievement and also another for completing a mission on heroic or higher with three skulls active. And following that, I went back to keys and unfortunately actually had to play through it normally this time. The two achievements I was missing were killing over 100 infector flood forms and also every elite in the level both requiring heroic difficulty or higher. These achievements were easy enough, I just thoroughly checked each corner of the ship as I went. There were a couple of elites that are hanging around on the other side of this drop, so I made sure I took those out with some grenade spam before progressing. Those are the only easily missable ones though I'd say. As a side note, watching all of this back really reminds me just how much of the game is copy and pasted. At around the halfway point of the campaign, you pretty much turn around and do everything again backwards. I guess they made the most of all their assets though at least. And anyway, after making sure I'd hunted down any elites hiding away, I hopped in a banshee to finish up keys. Two Betrayals has some of the most brutal achievements in the game. There's a bit of a workaround, but it's still very much not fun to do. So the achievements require you to complete the level without killing any grunts whilst playing on heroic or higher, and also complete the level without picking up a new gun, which must be done on legendary difficulty. However, your co-op partner can do whatever they want. So to tackle these achievements, I signed in with another account and simply played split screen with myself, doing all the work on the account that I didn't need the achievements on. Plus side was I always had a spawn point to fall back on, but sometimes I would die and spawn an absolute mile away, so I tried my best to run the other account and catch up a bit every now and then. I also did the despawn trick again at the beginning to make my life easier. Other than that, this level was just a ton of dying and spawning, but after around one hour I finished it up popping those two tricky achievements. And whilst I had the split screen set up, there was another achievement to benefit from this, completing a level on heroic or higher without taking any health damage. Again, it doesn't matter what happens to your cart partner, so I just stormed through the Pillar of Autumn on my other account, leaving the account I wanted the achievement on safe in the background. This one was much easier than two betrayals, taking a mere 15 minutes to complete. Now I just had one achievement left. I saved this one for last because it is rather daunting, completing the library on heroic or higher without dying. However, like many other achievements in the game, there are a couple of things that make it easier. First of all, I used the bandana skull for infinite ammo, mostly to grenade spam. The enemies on the library aren't actually infinitely spawning, despite what it seems like sometimes, so I just hung back around corners until red dots stopped appearing on the minimap and then pushed forward. And the other thing is, I think it's actually possible to quickly save and quit if you die, but before you respawn, and you won't void the achievement. I'm not 100% sure on that though because I actually managed to cruise through this first try without any trouble. Well, there was one minor hiccup where I backed off the edge of the map after being distracted by my computer, but I quickly paused and saved and quit and then loaded back in. Then finishing up the last floor and reaching the index, I got a bit worried because the achievement didn't pop straight away, but after the cutscene it did so my panic was short lived. And with that out of the way, I was done with Halo Combat Evolved. One of my favourite games and extremely nostalgic for me because I remember playing this in a Toys R Us back in 2001 and just deciding on the spot that I had to have it. Anyway, that's another game ticked off on the new account and that's the end of this video so I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.